share, subscribe, and join our new YouTube adventure. The Life and Times of Jurguj Arianaiti The great Albanian nobleman Jurguj Arianaiti, father of Jurguj Kastrioti Skanderbeg's wife Donica, was a hero and powerful warrior against the Ottomans in his own right. He was the eldest of three sons, the others being Musek and Vladen, of Komnen Arianaiti Sparta, who ruled an area outside Durs. It's unclear who Jurguj's mother was but according to socialist realism historian Dimitar Shuteriki she was a daughter of Nikol Zoharia. Born in 1383, young Jurguj witnessed the beginning of the Ottoman invasion of Europe, the victory of Sultan Murad I in 1385 at the Battle of Savra, near Lushnia. It was not far from his ancestral home, as an ally of Prince Karl Dopia of Kruj against Bala II of Lower Zeta. The area around Lake Shkoda marked the start of Turkish hegemony in Albania as the Albanian chieftains ruined each other. When Jurguj was six Murad marched into Kosovo and defeated a Serbian-led Christian army under Prince Laza. At the Battle of Kosovo the Albanian chieftain Teodor II Muzaka, whose descendant Maria would marry Jurguj, was killed, with the Albanians being led home by Skanderbeg's father G. John Castrioti. Jurgud's father, much like Gijon Castrioti with Skanderbeg, was forced by Murad to surrender his son as a hostage to be kept at the Sultan's court in Edirn to keep the Albanians from revolting. Thus Jurgud's Arianite was a captive of the Turks from 1423 to 27 when he finally returned home, burning with revenge. When Jurgud's Arianite, or his full name, Jurguj Arianiti Thopia Komneni, according to the historian statesman Bishop Van Nolly, returned home at the age of 44. His people and Albania in general has been greatly reduced by the Ottoman usurpers who had come to dominate the entire Balkans. 28 year old Sultan Murad II, having secured his reign by defeating and killing his brothers Dusmis Mustafa and Kechuk Mustafa, now turned the screws on the Albanian nobility. He further reduced their power and influence in local affairs in favor of Ottoman officials drawn from their own ranks by the Divsirm blood tax that forced subjugated families to surrender sons to be converted to Islam and trained to serve the Sultanate. Skanderbeg at this time was in fact a young officer serving Murad, who was only a few years older than him, having been taken from G. John Castrioti via the Divsirm. In early 1432 Andrea Thopia, Lord of Scuria, the region between modern Durs and Tehran started a small peasant rebellion which quickly spread. Arianite joined the revolt, as did old Nicole Dukagini from the north, soon all of Albania was aflame. G. John Castrioti joined the rebellion as well, summoning his son Jurguj, but Skanderbeg remained with the Sultan who did not send him to fight against Arianite, but kept him busy fighting in the east. Sultan Murad himself marched from Edirne in 1432 with an army intent on breaking the Albanians, he made a strong base in Macedonia and sent the Sanjak Bey, governor of Albania Ali Bey of Renesolu at the head of 10,000 men against Arianite. Marching up the Via Ignatia along the Shkumbin River to penetrate central Albania, the Turks were ambushed by Arianite at Berzeshtis and defeated. A second force under Ali was caught and destroyed in 1433 in a tight valley near Kuk, and Arianite was celebrated throughout Christian Europe, hailed as the protector of freedom. In 1434 he won a third great battle against Ishak Bey, who had crushed Gijon Castrioti's forces a few years earlier, Ishak barely escaped capture, while most of his Turks were taken prisoner, and Arianite was restored in Vlor and his hereditary castle at Karnin. Venice, Ragusa the Holy Roman Emperor Siximund, King Alfonso of Naples, and Pope Eugenius IV all promised aid for the Albanian cause, but delivered little. Thus the inexhaustible resources of the Ottoman Empire were marshaled yet again, and armies under Ali Bey and Turahan Bey were unleashed in 1435-6. Arianite eventually was worn down, retreating into the mountains of Skropari. Murad made peace with the indomitable Albanian, granting him control of his lands from the Shkumbin to the Vios, which the Ottomans could not take from him anyway. Jurguj Arianite, now 53, accepted this peace and bided his time for when he could strike yet again and free his people forever. He saw his opportunity to rise up once more against the Ottoman Empire in August 1443 when news came that Kula Sahin Pasha, governor of Rumelia, all the Sultan's lands in Europe, had been badly beaten by the Hungarian knight John Hunayadi and Vlad the Dragon in Wallachia. 
With support from Pope Eugenius IV, Arianite set out at the head of his small army into Macedonia. Meanwhile, in November Hanayadi defeated the new governor of Rumelia Kazim Pasha, who himself was Albanian, along with the old adversaries Turahan Bey and Ishak Bey, at the Battle of Nii in Serbia. On the eve of battle Skanderbeg, a cavalry commander in the Ottoman army rode away at the head of 300 Albanians to head back to Kruj and join the growing rebellion. In his company was his nephew Hamza Castrioti and his trusted Lieutenant Moises Kalemi, who was a nephew of Jurgaj Arianiti. In March 1444 Arianiti answered the summons of Skanderbeg to meet in the Venetian stronghold of Alesso, Lusha, with the other heads of the noble families to form a new union against the Sultan. Along with Andrea Thopia and his nephew Tanesh, Theodore Muzaka, Leek Zaharia, Pal and Nicole Dukagini, Pieter Spani, Leek Dushmani, Jurgaj Stres, G. John and Gojo Balshov, and Stefanika Krojevic of Upper Zeta, Jurgaj Arianiti, the primary leader of Albanian resistance in the decade leading up to this moment, and Jurgaj Kastrioti Skanderbeg declared a pact known in history as the League of Lusha. Seeing that the younger man Skanderbeg was an exceptionally talented leader of men, Jurgaj Arianiti joined the others in declaring an oath of Besa to each other and named Skanderbeg, chief of the League of the Albanian People, and Dominus Albani, Lord of Albania. Arianiti continued to lead his own men on the field of battle, but in every instance that Skanderbeg appeared in battle, he was the supreme commander, and victory followed Skanderbeg wherever he went. After six years of near-constant war, cracks in the league were beginning to show. Jurgaj Arianiti and Skanderbeg tried to make a formal alliance with Venice, but sensing imminent collapse, Venetian Senate demurred. At the head of 3,000 warriors Arianiti beat a Venetian force along the Drin River, as Venice perceived the Albanians to be weakened and thus sought to expand along the coast and seize Vlor from Arianiti. Skanderbeg delivered the final blow against a larger Venetian army under Daniel Urici, governor of Scutari, Skoda, and Venice paid the Albanians 1,400 ducats to secure peace. Now Murad struck. First Svetigrad surrendered, then Berat in early 1450, and Arianiti, now 67, laid down his arms. But when Murad and his teenage son Mermd besieged Kruj, Arianiti again took to the field and helped Skanderbeg defeat the Ottomans. Arianiti and 4,000 men joined Skanderbeg in an attempt to retake Svetigrad fortress near Lake Okrid, where the old nobleman displayed great bravery on the field of battle. But sadly his younger brother was killed during the failed siege. Yet because of the great resolve of the Albanians, Skanderbeg and King Alfonso of Naples signed the Treaty of Gaeta in March 1451. The Neapolitans signed similar independent treaties with Jurgaj Arianiti and the other nobles, guaranteeing financial support and arms, especially artillery, in return for swearing an oath of fidelity to the Neapolitan crown. A month later Skanderbeg married Donica, the eldest of Jurgaj's ten daughters, which cemented the alliance of the Arianiti and Castrioti families. In 1455, Theodore III Muzaka, relative of Jurgaj Arianiti's wife Maria Muzaka, lay ill in his fortress of Berat. He sent for Skanderbeg to come take possession of the castle, but before his lieutenant Pal Kuka could arrive, an Ottoman force snuck over the walls, murdered the Albanian garrison of 500 men, and hung the old nobleman. Now Skanderbeg himself arrived on the scene, joined by 72-year-old Jurgaj Arianiti and his horsemen as well as a 1,000-man Neapolitan contingent skilled in artillery and siege warfare. But when it looked as if the Ottomans locked within the castle of Berat were about to surrender Skanderbeg departed to check on the enemy's approach from Vlor, leaving Karl Muzaka Thopia in command. It was then that Old Ishak Bey Evronos appeared with 20,000 Ottomans to smite the Albanians in their camp along the Ozumi River. 800 of the Neapolitans were destroyed, Thopia was killed, his uncle Jurgaj Arianiti's men were beaten and scattered, and only brave Vrana Conti withstood the onslaught until Skanderbeg appeared. The dragon of Albania rode headlong into the fray, personally driving off the Ottomans with sword and mace. But the siege was over and Berat remained in the hands of the Sultan. Jurgaj Arianiti's power in the south was broken for good. Good news came in 1456 when it was reported that Donica had given birth to Jurgaj Arianiti's grandson Gijon II Castrioti. Her full name was Andronica Arianiti Nino's Muzaka at birth. 
the Arianite family, possibly of Illyrian ancestors, had roots in Byzantine Dyrrhachium from as early as the 9th century, although ancient history is difficult to unravel, with a later addition of relations with the Komnenos family of Byzantine royalty. Her mother Maria Muzaka was of that noble family from the Mizaki plain outside Berat and Apollonia, loyal Byzantine subjects who were raised to the title of despot of Albania by the Capetian King Charles of Anjou when he established his rule in the 13th century. Donica had been born in 1428 at the castle of Carnine outside Vlor, living there until her marriage to Jurgaj Castrioti on 21 April 1451 at Ardenica Monastery outside Lushnia. As the year 1460 began, old Jurgaj Arianite, all of 77 years, took the saddle once more against the Ottomans. For his lifelong enemy Sultan Murad had died and his son Mermd, called the conqueror for having taken Constantinople with his mighty artillery six years earlier, was invading Albania yet again. Up the valley of Farka came the Ottoman horde, pushing all opposition out of their way till they reached Shushis. Here Arianites' last warriors made their stand, and his castle Sapoti, which with Karnin had served these many years as his twin capitals, withstood all assaults. The Ottomans withdrew as if beaten, but returned at night to attempt a surprise attack when the main Albanian force under Arianite moved off to Galagat, thinking they had been victorious. The small garrison remaining at Sapoti held firm till the end, but through the twin weapons of bribery and treachery, the favorite means of the Turks, the castle fell and all inside were put to the sword. Shortly thereafter, Jurgaj Aranite died, and the hopes of his family were carried by the child G. John II Castrioti and his father, Lord Skanderbeg, Dragon of Albania. Donica accompanied G. John to him when he escaped to Italy after Skanderbeg died in 1468. Donica would never return to her beloved Albania, living instead on the estate in Puglia awarded to her husband by a grateful King Ferdinand of Naples for services rendered during the Neapolitan struggle against Prince Orsini of Taranto and his Angevin allies. When the Italian wars broke out in 1494 between France and Naples, Donica fled Italy with her grandson Alonso Castriotti for Valencia in what is now Spain, where her good friend Queen Giovanna of Aragon, King Ferdinand of Naples' wife, had been born. It was here that Donica died in 1506 and was buried at the Royal Monastery of the Holy Trinity, with Alonso later buried at her side. Share, subscribe, and join our new YouTube adventure.